So this morning we are going to just be doing some questions to wrap up mechanics one or our equations of motion. We're going to try to do as many as possible. So I'm going to start you all up for the first few and then we're going to go through the working quickly. Now, if you all get out, everybody gets out the question. There's no reason to go through the working. Please, 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 you all, if you all are, don't be shy. If you do not understand how I got something, say something. You could send me a private message. If you feel shy, I will not say who has an issue. Or you could hit me a thumbs up or you can do something. If you don't understand what is going on, this is a teaching session let me know don't just sit down there very quietly the beautiful thing here you could send me a private message miss i don't understand and you don't have you know you don't have to think that everybody's looking at you all right everyone so please ask questions because once questions are coming in assignments mm -mm, we're not taking any questions here so let's look at question one a plane accelerates down a runway at 3.20 meters per second squared for 32.8 seconds. Excuse. You did this? Yeah. yeah, we did one and two. Yeah, we did one two. and two. Yeah. Yeah. I'm now thinking this looks really familiar. So let's go on to question three. So since we've done a few, all right, we should get this out much, much quicker. All right. A race car accelerates uniformly from 18.5 meters per second to 46.1 meters per second in 2.4 seconds. Determine the acceleration of the car and the distance traveled. So the very first thing we do, we do our UVATs. U, V, A, T, and S. First thing you do, you just write down your letters and now let's start plugging numbers. So we have a car accelerates. Remember, accelerates means to go up from one speed to another speed. And we do see here we start at one speed because 8.5 meters per second indicate a velocity. We go from 18.5 meters per second to 46.1 meters per second. So we have a first velocity and we have a second velocity. So let's pull those in. We're going to get 18.5 meters per second and 46.1 meters per second let's read our next number in 2.47 seconds seconds is time so that would be 2.47 seconds they have access for the first part of your question to calculate a they haven't access about s as yet so leave this blank so we go straight to our equations of motion and we're going to see which equation has u, v, a, and t. All right, let me just bring down the equations here. The first one. First one. All right, I'm just going to have it here for us to see. Paste. All right, so we can see it is the first one, all right, because we have V, we have U, we have A, well, we want to find A and then we find T. So you all are just going to plug in your values there. You all are working it out. I'm not working it out. And for B, you want to work out the distance traveled. So we, we can use any equation that has S in it. The easiest equation with S in it is which one? One, two, three, or four. Three. three very good all right three is always the easiest equation to work with s well of course that is only if we have all the terms all right so we will use s is equal to a half by t we know what t is we not know what v is and we know what u is so that's plug in your values work it out so you all go ahead work this out and tell me what you get i'm going to work it out too so for part A, we want to work out what is A. I know V is 46.1, um, U is 18.5, right? U is 18.5 plus A, 
which is what we want to find by 2.47. So these two numbers here have been added and subtracted. So let's put our numbers together. So you're going to get 46.1 minus 18.5 to give us 2.47a. Let's do our calculations. So we'll get 46.1 minus 18.5. 27.6 is equal to 2.47a. And we know the only way to get rid of the number in front of a letter is to divide by that number. So we're going to divide both sides by 2.47. And you're going to get a is equal to, to two decimal places. You all are supposed to write your answers to two decimal places when necessary, meters per second squared. So that's for the first one. The second one, really simple and straightforward. All you had to do was just put in your numbers, the same numbers as above, right? 2.47 is your time, 46.1 plus 18.5. And when you multiply those out, you know, you have to work out for the rules of bond mass where you calculate what's inside of your brackets first, and then you multiply everything across and you will get the 79 point, what was it? 79.78. 79.78, thank you. Meters. All right, so here is just a matter of plugging in your values and doing the math for it. And the hardest thing here is number one, to determine what values you have to use and where you use them. But once you've done that, it's just a matter of simple algebra to go ahead and do. So let's look at the next question. I'm just gonna start you all up on it. So we have a bullet leaves a rifle with a muzzle velocity of 521 meters per second. While accelerating through the barrel of the rifle, the bullet moves a distance of 0.84 meters. Determine the acceleration of the bullet, assuming it has uniform acceleration. So here we have to make some assumptions. Not assumptions, but you know, U V A T S. When a bullet is in a a bullet or any projectile is sitting in the apparatus that's going to make it move. The initial velocity will be zero. All right, this is where sometimes they give you values and other times you have to use a little bit of common sense. You know, a little bit. So a bullet leaves a rifle with a velocity of 521. Now here we are talking about the motion of your bullet within the rifle itself. We're not looking at what happens after it leaves. That is something else. So here it leaves the muzzle at 521. So that means the final velocity is 521 meters per second. The acceleration, we do not know. The time, we do not know. But it had traveled a distance of 0.84 meters while moving through the rifle. And they have asked us to find the acceleration. They asked us nothing about time. And what equation has U, V, A, and S in it? Let me just bring it back down for us to use. Which equation here has U, V, A, and S? Fourth one, good. All right, so we're going to use equation four. So you all go ahead. See how sometimes with these questions, they're not necessarily difficult. You just need to practice to learn, to recognize where we are given values and where they are hidden. So we'll take a couple minutes to do that. Record. So question four, just to go back to question four, pretty working for question four. Now we're gonna go straight into five. We want to know what our um, acceleration was. We know V is 521. So we're going to get 521 squared equal to zero. Zero squared is zero. 
plus two by a by 0 0.84. When you square that number out, you're gonna get, well, a large number. Let's just leave it here so you can put it in the calculator when you're done. Two by 0.84 will give you 1.68a. And to get a, all you're gonna to have to do is divide both sides by the 1.68. And when you divide that across, you end up getting a pretty large number of 161,572. And if you want to put it down some places, 0 0.02 meters per second squared. So going on to question five, cars cruise down an expressway at 25 meters per second. So that means that the velocity car is traveling right now. Engineers want to design an interchange for deceleration of minus two meters per second squared that lasts for three seconds. So that means they just want to give you a little section of road that's going to allow the cars to slow down because you don't want cars to continuously going you know, too fast. So I want you to determine A, the velocity of the car once it has reached the end of the approach. So I've color coded it for you all here. We know the initial velocity is 25 meters per second. They have asked us to find what is the velocity at the end of approach and end means, you know, final. You know, this is where our English is going to come into play, not just only maths. So they say at the end of the approach, this means final speed. They have told us that the deceleration is two meters per second squared. And the time that you're going to be on this little um, interchange will be three seconds. So our time will be three seconds. So using what equation has U, V, A, and T? Equation one, V is equal to U plus A, T. So it's going to be V. We do not know what V is. 25 plus what is a minus two and what is t three let's put this across here so you're again going to get v is equal to 25 two minus two by three is minus six so you're going to get v is equal to 25 minus six is 19 meters per second for the next part of the question, where I want to work out the distance traveled, it's very, very simple. We're going to use the simplest equation for traveling distance. S is equal to a half <laughs> Yes, please use your calculators properly, folks. Half of T by U plus V. So here you just have to go and plug in your numbers. You know T is three, right? You know the T is half by three, and in here will be 19 plus 25. And when you work that out, you will get 66 meters. So that was pretty simple enough there. Now the last part of the question, this is where you're gonna have to think a little bit. So let's see here. What maximum velocity could a car be entering the interchange and still be able to exit at the intended velocity? So here they are resetting the question for us slightly. Now, things that we know from before, the interchange here, let's think, you know, if this is your highway, right? They're going to have um, a little offshoot road that's going to be a certain distance. This offshoot road will not change, but what it's meant to do is to slow down the car. So you're going to enter this little interchange with a velocity, and we're going to leave at a certain velocity. So some things about this remain. And let's read our question again. So what maximum velocity could a car be entering? So that means they're asking us to find U entering being our first velocity. We know that the interchange is 66 meters. They cast that in concrete and steel and, and asphalt. That is not going to change. So we know that that interchange is 66 meters. And they have asked us um, what maximum velocity could the car be entering the, the interchange and have 
and still be able to exit at the intended velocity. The intended velocity is what we worked out up here. So our intended velocity, we already worked it out to be 19 meters per second. So let's see what values we have. We know the initial velocity, we don't know it, but that's what we have to find out. We know the distance traveled. We know the final velocity is supposed to be 90 meters per second. And then they have given us a tip. They said to assume that the extreme deceleration of four times the usual rate, the usual rate that the interchange was built for, for you to slow down on was two meters per second squared. So they're telling us to assume that it was four times the initial rate. Four by two is eight. So you're gonna get an acceleration or deceleration of minus eight meters per second squared. See how all the values here are kind of hidden within the words themselves. So we know that the acceleration is minus eight meters per second squared. They have asked us to find the initial velocity. We know that the final velocity is 19 meters per second and the distance that they have to travel will be 66 meters. Again, what equation has A, U, V, and S in it? Let me just pull it down for you. All right, we've already used that equation in this topic, All right? So we have equation one, two, three, and four. So we go ahead and use equation four, and we want to work out what is V. So you'll go ahead and give that a try, and we'll go ahead and, and continue this on. So if we wanted to finish working this out, we said that we want to work out what is the velocity our car will have to use to go up the ramp and still reach a velocity of 19 meters per second, even though the ramp is still 66 meters. And they have to told us to assume that we have an acceleration four times the normal, meaning you are slowing down much faster. You're hitting that brakes with a little bit more force to slow down to see, reach the same velocity of 90 meters per second. So we already came up with our values. So we have our acceleration is minus eight because it told us to assume four times the acceleration. Four by two is eight. They don't know what is the initial velocity. They're asking us what velocity will it start with. So that is initial. They said it's going to leave the ramp at the same velocity of 19 meters per second. And the length of the ramp is still 66 meters. So plug in our values. This is going to give us equation four. So we have V squared is equal to U squared plus 2S. Let's plug in our values. U, um, V is equal to 19. U, we do not know, so we're going to find that out. We have two, we know that A is equal to minus eight, and S is equal to 66. When you multiply it out, out you're going to get 361 is equal to U squared minus 1056. Now, I have a letter and a number on one side and a number on the next side. All I'm going to do is take this negative one 1056 and carry it across the equal sign. And when you subtract, take a negative number, and carry it across, it becomes positive. So that's how we added it. This is simple algebra. So u squared will be equal to 361 plus 1056. You're going to get 1417. And as I said, the reverse of square is square root. So to get rid of this square, we find the square root. So you just go ahead, find the square root of 1417, and you get to two decimal places, 37.64 meters per second so just to wrap up the last bit here all right i know this part for question six i have seen this conversion come for exams and i'm going to show you all how to do a conversion right now of meters and kilometers per second kilometers per hour because nowhere in any vehicle are you all going to see velocity or speed in meters per second, never, right? When in physics questions, you're gonna find meters per second. 
or really scientific equipment. You always hear of kilometers per hour, all right? Please don't talk to me about miles per hour because we don't, that's not SI, I, I really don't care. So I want to know how to convert um, meters per second to kilometers per hour. There is a formula to do it. Not really a formula, but it's a little bit, little bit of extra brain power. Well, extra, not too, too much. So let's look at it. I want to know how to convert one meter per second all right, and I want to know how to get those, how to do, I'm sorry, I want to know how to convert kilometers per hour and then meters per second. So let's look at this. Kilometers per hour is the same thing as writing a kilometer over an hour. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Yeah? Now, I want to convert kilometers over hours Oh my goodness, what was that? Kilometers per hour, and I want to go to meters per second. How many meters are in a kilometer? Thousand. Thousand. How many seconds are in an hour? 3,600. 3,600. Right, one kilometer is a thousand meters. One hour is thirty-six hundred seconds. Everybody follow that so far? So I can look and see here. Let's just work out our numbers. One kilometer an hour. Let's work this out. Ten divided, a thousand divided by thirty-six hundred will give me zero point. Two seven. Oh no, let us just cancel our numbers. You're gonna get take the zeros, take the zeros. So you're gonna end up with 10 over 36 meters per second. So that is how you're going to go and calculate kilometers an hour. What you're going to do one kilometer an hour is equal to 10 over 36 meters. Per second. So if I want to go and work out two kilometers an hour, it's just going to be two multiplied by 10 over 36. So if you do that in your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.56 meters per second. Let's try a bigger number. If you hear of 100 kilometers an hour, all you're going to have to do is multiply 100 by 10 over 36. Why I'm using the fraction? Because the fraction is going to give you a much more precise value. Because when you use 10 over 36, go and find that decimal, you end up losing some accuracy. All right. So 100 by 10 over 36 will give me 27.78 meters per second. So you all see how to convert kilometers an hour to meters per second. All you have to do is to multiply whatever your kilometers an hour value is by 10 over 36. And if you forget how to do that conversion, I actually sometimes I do forget. I just go back to the very basics here. I go back to this basic here where I know that a kilometer an hour will be a thousand meters over 3600 seconds and i just go ahead after that and do my cancellations and i remember it all right everybody okay with that i will send you how to do class is over i don't want to take your break too much do you all have class after a break yeah yes um, I don't know if it's right after break, but we have another class to do. Somebody check, otherwise I'm going to stop right now and let you go for your break. If you don't have a class next period, we'll take the five minutes and finish. Miss, Miss 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 what? Miss 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 Miss
We supposed to have class last period, but we geography class have it. We have it ten ten. But it really supposed to be one forty five, but she just bring up the time. Okay, today. anyway, let's stop there. I will send I will actually continue recording. Let me just pause the recording. So just to give you a little formula to remember to go from kilometers per hour to meters per second, all we have to do is to take our kilometers and our value, right? So whatever value we have for kilometers an hour and we multiply it by 10 over 36. Remember I said to use the 10 over 36 to give you a more precise value. And actually what I do when I multiply this, say looking at the question above, 100 by 10 over 36, I actually just go and multiply the 100 by 10 because you know uh, multiplication is cumulative, it goes across. And then I divide it by 36 and to two decimal places, I get my answer. So for the first formula, or first way to remember this, now please note, um, this is not expressly stated in the syllabus, but I have seen questions recently come in this. So that's to show you or to expose you on how to do this conversion. So to go from kilometers an hour to meters per second, all we have to do is take whatever kilometer an hour value we would give us and multiply by 10 over 36. As I said, we use the fraction instead of the decimal because this way we get a little more precise. So we have one direction here. Let's look at the next way to do this. We want to go from meters per second to kilometers an hour because Meters per second means nothing to us. I don't know, I can't say how fast a car is going and say, yeah, that car was going 10 meters per second. No, you can look at something and if you'd say it was traveling at 80 kilometers an hour, you all can appreciate that value because that is what we use in our regular lives. So let us learn now how to go from meters per second to kilometers an hour. Now, this is the reverse of what we just did. And simply, we just have to do a reverse of our calculation. And what is the reverse of multiplication? Division. So instead of multiplying by a term, we're going to divide by that term instead. So if I had kilometers an hour to meters per second, and the method to do this was to get the kilometers an hour and multiply it by 10 over 36 to get the meters per second. All we have to do, meters per second to kilometers an hour, all we have to do is to divide by 10 over 36. Now, the nice thing about this, to divide by any number, you know you have to invert it and multiply. And how do I invert? If I have to invert 10 over 36, that's going to give me 36 over 10. And that's going to give me a nice, sweet little number of 3.6. So all you're going to have to do here is to multiply by 3.6. So let's see how to do this. If I want to take one meter per second and I want to carry it to kilometers an hour, I'm going to show you the both ways. I'm going to take one divided by 10 over 36. And this is the same thing as saying one by 36 over 10. And this is going to give me 3.6 kilometers an hour, which is really, really slow. Let's look at different values now and see how much bigger we can get. So let's look at, say, 20 meters per second. If I want to take 20 meters per second and convert it, what am I writing? And convert it to kilometers an hour, all I have to do is take the 20 and multiply by the 
3.6. And you end up with 72 kilometers an hour. So you see how the small numbers in meters per second doesn't tell us, you know, really and truly how fast the object is going as for us to appreciate because we don't know what those numbers mean in practice. But 72 kilometers an hour is about the average speed someone travels with on the highway. Remember the highway speed was supposed to be 60, then they carried up to 80. And then some people, most people drive between 80 kilometers an hour to 100 kilometers an hour. So that's the average speed or the average velocity that they travel with on the highways. So let's look at a big number. If I have like 50 meters per second and I want to determine how fast this is in kilometers an hour, all you got to do is 50 by 3.6 and we're going to get 180 kilometers an hour. All right, so 180 kilometers an hour, just to tell you how fast 180 kilometers an hour is, the most destructive hurricane that we've had in the last decade were Hurricane Irma and that big, huge monster of Hurricane Dorian. Hurricane Dorian and, Dorian and Irma both set the records for the strongest hurricanes in the um oh no no i'm looking at miles i'm sorry let's just finish with that 280. all right that is how fast the strongest hurricanes are 180 kilometers an hour is pretty fast all those winds that we all see right now that blow off roofs in trinidad barely, barely cross 70 kilometers an hour. Trinidad has never seen a hundred kilometer an hour wind ever, ever. And we see how much damage, a little bit of breeze, that little bit of dust that we get over ever so often, that is little bit compared. So here, I hope you all recognize how we can do the conversions. Again, as I said, it's not expressly stated in the syllabus, but here I'm giving you the exposure so we can start taking the physics numbers we know in class and apply to how fast we know things move in real life because we all know how fast 60 kilometers an hour is. We all know how fast 100 kilometers an hour is. 20 meters a second says nothing to us, right? Absolutely, we can't relate to 20 meters a second, but we do know what 70 kilometers an hour is. Okay, so I hope that helped. So when you see these, you don't see them very often in questions, but I don't want you all to be completely clueless and panic if you happen to see a question that comes in kilometers an hour in exams. All right, if anybody wants to ask how to do miles an hour, I can show you that, but that's the next day and I could just write down something for you. All. So everybody, that's the end of this class. I know this is the extra piece that we added in, so you all have a good day. Have a good weekend and I will see you next week where we will do our first execute lab. So bye-bye.